You're listening to the Clean Comedy Podcast with James Creviston and Luke LaCoy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Clean Comedy Podcast. It is James, and I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Luke LaCoy. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so today we have a we have a special guest and this guy has a really cool podcast called Behind the Bits. It's it's so interesting. Also, what caught my eye is not actually that it's about comedy, but it looks like his cover has almost like a Rick and Morty-esque type look on it. And so for me, it like that grabbed my attention. I was like, oh, is this a Rick and Morty podcast? And it wasn't, but I was happy because I still found something about comedy that I can laugh at. So Please welcome the very funny, the very cool, Mr. Scott Curtis. Thank you. Thanks for having me, James and Luke. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, so, that's so the the whole Rick and Morty thing is kind of funny. The guy I can't remember his name, but the guy that designed my podcast logo, I had it done like six months before I started my podcast, and all of his stuff looks like Rick and Morty. And nice. I don't I don't know who Rick and Morty is. <laughs> I've never seen it, so Acrobat, I was just like, sir, okay, sacrilege. it looks good. <laughs> Now you're gonna have to go watch Rick and Morty, but here's the here's the problem. Once you start watching Rick and Morty, you'll just keep watching Rick and Morty. Like you'll get to the end of all the seasons, and then uh-huh. you'll start over again because you'll find like five or ten episodes that you absolutely love, and you can quote. Yeah. So it's it's a weird thing like that. I don't know what yeah, kind of I, shows you like. Most likely, probably like X Files. Uh, I I've watched X Files like four times through. Yes, X Files. That was such a good show. Although the earlier seasons, I I like much better than the later seasons of X Files. Yeah, they honest. did. Yeah, it was it was better. But I I just love it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how you got into comedy, how you get on, got into behind the bits, and how this kind of came about and stuff. Yeah, so it's it's kind of a it's a funny story because it's comedy. <laughs> I uh, I've been working at the same place for 16 years, and I'm a consultant. And the we have a company party every year. And about five years ago, the guy who was in charge of the company party, who's one of my coworkers and a friend of mine, his name is Michael Dunlap. I always like to mention his name for posterity. But uh, he said, you know what? We've had a magician for the last three years, and we'd like a comedian. So we'd like for you to do comedy for the company party. And I said, no, I'm not a comedian. <laughs> and he wouldn't let up. The guy asked me like four times. So finally I come home and told my wife, I said, I said, honey, you know, Michael is just uh, bugging me about doing comedy for this company party. And she said, well, you know, you want to do it. So do it. So my, my first set was 45 minutes Whoa. and I got paid for it. And the anomaly. Yeah, 150 <laughs> bucks. And I didn't get paid again for a long time, of course. But you <laughs> And know, you never did 45 minutes again for a long time, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't remember the last time I did 45, but yeah, the 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 cool thing about it was is it sparked it sparked something that's been in me for a long time. I I talk about this all the time when I was probably 12 years old, I saw Tom Dreesen on Mike Douglas show and the set that he did just made me in love with comedy. So back then it was a TV guide and I looked through the TV guide and looked for Tom Dreesen's name. He did uh, Mike Douglas. He did Dinah Shore. He did Merv Griffin. He did Carson. When Letterman started him and Letterman are uh, best friends. He did Letterman like 30 times. So I was just in love with Dreesen and I always watched him, but then life happened and I you know, I got married. I had kids. I'm what Ron Bennington would call a ham and egger. I just, I just did my job and came home. But after the kids were gone, I decided, you know what? Michael had me do this once. I'm going to go ahead and do some open mics and start doing this. And it caught on. So I've been doing it for about five years. And I decided that since I'm an older gentleman and I need to learn as much as I can, as quickly as I can, so I can do some comedy before I die, that I would like to start a podcast and learn everything I can about comedy and then impart that knowledge onto my listeners. So that's really what the, the whole podcast is about. That's, and that's exactly the same reason we started the Queen Comedy Podcast is we actually started because we want, we're like, how can we, because you can't go up to comedians at a comedy club that may be like no. headliners and say, hey, can you talk to me about comedy for 20, yeah. 30 minutes? They're not going to listen to you. They're not going to talk to you. Right. But if you have a podcast, 
and you say, hey, can I have 20, 30 minutes of your time to be on this podcast and help you promote whatever you're doing or get your name out there? Yeah. Would you be open to that? They're more than happy to do that. And that's exactly what, how Luke and I started. And we actually started also to document our journey. So if you listen to like the early episodes of the Queen Comedy Podcast, it's the first episode. I don't think it exists anymore, but uh, it was it was in a <laughs> – well, here's why. It was in a coffee shop. And it was super loud and the, the, it was just terrible. It was like the mm -hmm. worst thing you could possibly do. We knew nothing about podcasting. Yeah. We knew nothing about doing any of that stuff. We figured we'd meet in a, a coffee shop and do it. And then we started doing it at my apartment. And then now we do it on Zoom and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. um, it was literally the same reason. How can we get as much knowledge as fast as possible outside of doing stand-up all the time? And get to pick people's brains that we may never otherwise get to get to stop and talk to, you know, for, right, for 20, right. 30, like have their attention for 20 or 30 minutes. So yeah. bravo to you, sir, for being a genius on that as well. That's that's the way you do it. <laughs> to be fair, I also stole that from Rogan because Rogan does the exact same thing. He wants to learn yeah. something. He books a guest and then talks to them for three hours about it. You know? Yeah, so, no doubt. So. <laughs> So where are you from? I, I, that, that, I didn't ask that question. Yeah, I'm actually from Mishawaka, Indiana, which is right by South Bend, which is right by Notre Dame. So I, I'm, I I'm, have friends. We have friends from there, actually. Oh, from cool. South, from South Bend, yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is I did a podcast prior to Behind the Bits. It was called Michiana People, because when you live close to the Michi Michigan line, you are Michiana. And I... I interviewed much like you. I interviewed people in places I shouldn't be interviewing because the noise was terrible, but I did it for actually about five years. I did a, wow. that local po podcast and it got better, obviously. And, uh, it, it got, it got to the point where, you know, the comedy was becoming more important than talking to uh, musicians and entrepreneurs and stuff like that. So I switched over to behind the bits, but it was really, it was really good learning because I came into behind the bits knowing a lot more than I would had I not done that before. Cause if you listen to my early episodes of Michiana people, it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part about podcasting, though, is you learn as you go. It's it's yeah. another skill that you have to really kind of build up, like talking to people, asking them questions, waiting for pauses, like all those things. You yeah. do it very well, so that makes sense. I was like, man, he's so good at this. Like, I was I was impressed, and I was like, I've never heard of this guy. This is amazing. And I think you're only you're like fifty episodes in or something like that, right? Is there... Actually, I'm. Uh, I think I hit sixty three this week. Did you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, and you have some of my favorite people, Robert G. Lee, who's a good friend of ours, yeah. like are a big mentor to us. I, uh, Steve Hofstetter, who I love, and I've never been mm -hmm. able to pin down and get a hold of. So bravo to you, sir. I yeah, mean, you I have a bunch of people that. that I was, yeah. Uh, Jeff Shaw, who's a good friend of ours and just did the podcast, Justin uh -huh. Foster, who actually Justin Foster, uh, I wanted to, do, I had a similar story like you. I wanted to do stand up. I, but I wanted to do it for my 35th birthday. So I decided nine months before my 35th birthday, I would, get ready to try to do stand up, And I was going to do half an hour for my birthday. And uh -huh. I was going to rent out the club and I was going to do this show. Justin Foster worked at the club that I was at. He's oh, there. Oh. He's the, he's the bartender. We were talking and he would, he would give me tips and see me at the mics or whatever. And he goes, man, you're getting better and you're getting better faster. I was like, well, I got a show. I'm doing half an hour for my birthday. And he goes, uh -huh. wait, didn't you just start? And I was like, yeah, 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 I started like, you know, eight months ago or whatever. He's like, and you're going to do half an hour, not even a year. And I said, yeah, he goes, you're insane. You're an yeah. insane person. He's like, There's, <laughs> nobody should be doing that. And uh, so I did the show and then like maybe a week or two later, I came back and did open mic and he was working and he goes, how did it go? And I was like, it was terrible. And he goes, <laughs> I told you, you know, like pretty much I told you. So I, I love Justin. He's, he's so funny. And I was like, Oh man, I, re I really like talking to him. He was, he, he was so serene. Cause we were, at, you know, smack dab in the middle of the pandemic when I talked to him and for some reason, you know, his, his serenity kind of came through the screen to me and it actually calmed me down because I know I was having a rough day that day. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know why, but we're friends on Facebook. But every time I see him post something, I just my blood pressure comes down a couple notches. So <laughs> that that I, I actually really makes like sense. Him. Yeah, that makes sense. He's he's just one of those people who's so intelligent and like yeah, it kind of give you this perspective where you're like, oh, I never thought of that. Like, cause he helped me with some jokes too, where yeah. I do a joke at open mic, and he like I said, we he was at the bar in the club, so he'd hear it, and then afterwards he'd say, hey, you know what? Reverse how you said that. It'll 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 make it funnier. 
And yeah. so I just like little things. And he's, yeah. oh, my gosh, he's the best. Yeah. And he inspired me because when I talked to him, he said that he retook the comedy class that he took when he first started. So he's been doing it for 15 years. Yeah. So um, Robert G. Lee is doing a comedy class and I signed up for it because I, I've I've done some what I consider semi-formal stuff like Joel and I have done some stuff, Joel Byers. Yeah. And uh, he's also got a, a video uh thing out that um I, I i bought and i did that too but robert for some reason he's another guy i connected with just because of his sensibility he's got a little, little, little bit of sarcasm a little dry <laughs> and so i decided i'm going to go ahead and take his class and see if i can get better really so he's so how has robert not told us this this is this is insane i'm sorry i <laughs> that, hear that's, from you that's been new since since we talked to robert his his class has been uh, it, it came new. out after we talked to him yeah, wow. but, yeah but he on... should have emailed me or called yeah. me or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> Don't tell my son that. Yeah. I'm now mad at him. He's like my dad, and that's how he's going to treat me. Like, that's hurtful. Yeah. He... <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him know. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah, please do. Like, say, you need to, you need to call James because he's hurt. He's hurt right now. And he loves you. And this is how you're treating him. That's yeah. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> That's awesome. So you still do you still live in uh, South Bend in that area and stuff? Yeah, my wife and I are actually we're working on an expl- a, a, a escape plan because um, really the only thing holding us here right now is the fact that we have a home here. So we're uh, my son's down in Huntsville, and we're looking to possibly in the fairly near future move to Huntsville, Alabama, and be closer to my son. Nice. Yeah, yeah I mean, and then you'll be right there next to Florida. Florida's amazing for. Like yeah. not retiring, but it's mm-hmm. forgetting. Like we're thinking about moving from LA to Orlando area. We have friends out there and stuff. So uh-huh. we're thinking about that too. And there's a great comedy scene actually in Orlando. A lot of comedians, Preacher Lawson came out of there. I know yeah. a ton of comedians who've come in, out of the Orlando area. It's a great comedy scene. And then you can hit the the kind of Southern places you can hit like, yeah. you know, Atlanta and go up to Tennessee yeah. and you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah. yeah. Atlanta's got a great scene too. Yeah. Yeah. And you're clean. You're a clean comedian. Yeah. I, I am uh so I don't advertise myself as a clean comedian. I just okay. say I'm a comedian, but I've naturally gone to it. I, I think by looking at me, I look either like a pharmacist <laughs> or your high school history teacher. <laughs> so for me to do blue stuff isn't going to work. Yeah. <laughs> what is your, what is your favorite part about comedy? And what's your favorite part about doing your podcast too? So the comedy part is really just getting that energy from the audience i've I've done some shows where it just worked and every everybody laughed and everybody loved what i had to say and it's not so much that i felt good about what i did i just felt so good that they felt good and i don't know it's just it's a feeling one of the things tom dreesen talks about is that comedy is a um healing uh method and if i made somebody feel better if if i made their day better by doing my act i'm i'm totally paid i'm good and that is really the best thing i like about comedy um as far as the podcast goes it's just all the great people i get to talk to and the different perspectives i get and it's funny comedians we're all we're all similar in a way in that we're we're very aware of our surroundings. We, we are very keen to see what's going on in the world and what's going on in our lives. However, we all approach it different ways. And the way that some of these people approach it is way different than I would. Um, and, but it works for them. And, and I think that's the, (laughs) the big takeaway of my podcast. If you never listen to it is you got to find your own voice and do it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Luke. I was curious if there's been like any kind of recurring themes or advice from, from uh, comedians that you've interviewed. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, don't listen to other comedians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so true story. Um, a friend of mine, uh, he's from the Chicago area was touring with uh, Jeff Foxworthy before you might be a redneck if, and Jeff, 
pitched the idea to my friend. I'm not going to say what his name is, but he was on my podcast and he pitched the idea. You might be a redneck. And my friend said, that's never going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so, Who's laughing now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, my friend's still, uh, you know, sl slogging away at clubs like everybody else. But the, the funny thing is, is you get good advice. And, but the thing is, is you always have to find your own way. There, no matter what kind of advice you get, you have to really, you you have to really be terrible up there a few times and find out that this isn't you and just keep slogging through it. And uh, that's really, I'm that's pretty universal. Just don't listen to other people, <laughs> and, yeah. and and yet listen to them because <laughs> some of them actually has some good stuff. Well, what's funny is I did I heard about Bill Ingvall before I ever heard of Jeff Foxworthy because yeah. the here's your sign thing was big. Uh -huh. And my and my grandma would play that like bit for us and stuff. And it was, yeah. you know, it's clean or whatever, but it's super funny. And I just remember his tire bit, like, oh, looks like you got a flat tire. It's like, no, the other three just swelled up. Here's your <laughs> sign. Like that was the joke. <laughs> and I and I always remember that as a kid. I would love that. And then and then when I found out that they all toured together, I was like, oh, Bill Ingvall made Jeff Foxworthy famous. That's not how that worked, by the way, just so everyone yeah. knows. <laughs> <laughs> but that was also a time where catchphrases were a big thing, right? Because yeah. Larry the Cable Guy had get her done. And yeah. he would also you know, do the thing where he'd say something bad. Then he'd say, oh, Lord, please forgive me, little pygmies. You know, he would do that thing. And uh -huh. then like Bill Ingvall, the, here's your sign. Uh, Jeff Foxworthy he might be a redneck. Jeff Foxworthy made millions on that you might be a redneck oh, yeah. i have i have a book uh might you might be a redneck like book that like i bought one time yeah i was like this is such an interesting thought process he took basically like you know yo mama jokes and made yeah. them redneck jokes you know yeah. it's hilarious yeah yeah i mean it was absolute genius yeah i i i wish i had something like that you know because the person that the only person i can remember that did that before and we talked about this with joel is rodney dangerfield you know the i get no respect that was yeah. the that was the line and there wasn't anybody else doing that type yeah. thing at the time so it's such an interesting process and you know yes you're gonna get people who call jeff or bill or larry you know oh they're hacks because they do the same thing over and over again but it's like dude they they found their niche they found their thing that works you know yeah. it's like people who would call carrot top uh, a hack or whatever because he's a prop comic but that dude's made a living out of it like he, he's made something amazing and that's a funny thing about my show is you find the ones that are really mature that just understand what the business is yeah they give props to those guys they don't care the they're working on a gimmick or yeah. whatever they it, it worked for him and they respect that. I, I just talked to uh, Corey Ryan Forrester, who is nothing like Jeff Foxworthy. And he gives so many props to Jeff Foxworthy. He's like, I I'm, I'm not as good as him and I'm not like him, but people try to compare me to him and I'm thankful, you know, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to check him out. That's cool. That's one of those things where, you know, there's like, it almost seems like the people who don't get it, are the people who take longer in comedy. Like if they're like, well, that person's a hack. Well, no, they're yeah. not a hack. Right. Like they they found a thing that works, yeah. a thing that gets people to lick, listen to them and like them and a thing that they can build on. Right. You know, yeah. no one ever called, no one's going to call Rodney Dangerfield a hack. You're no. not going to hear somebody do that. Right. But yeah. they'll go out and call, you know, Larry, the cable guy or Jeff Foxworthy or whatever. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like they've found, they know how to write a joke. They yeah. know how to build that formula and they made millions of dollars out of it. How are you going right. to be mad at that? You can't be mad about that. Yeah. You know, you're, you're putting your energy in the wrong place. If you're, if you're yeah. thinking those types of things, you just really need to put your energy on yourself. If you want to be a good comic. Now where you're at in, uh, in Indiana, where, where do you perform at around there? Is there a lot of places to perform or do you have to go up to Chicago or how does that work? You know, it's, it's funny. We've got a club here called the drop comedy club that's uh, it's fairly popular a lot of chicago comics come and then some of the uh more regional people come and i've done uh quite a few open mics there i was actually just putting on my own shows up until the pandemic hit because i have a friend that has a more of a rock and roll bar and he'd give it to me on thursday night so i could either do showcases or do a couple comics in a headliner so i was doing that and I was actually going up into Michigan because Grand Rapids is really kind of a cool little comedy scene. And uh, Kalamazoo's got one too. So I was doing, I was doing stuff there and 
I was really getting kind of serious about it before the pandemic. It was more of a hobby before that. And I was really like, hey, maybe I can do something with this. And then pandemic hits and here I am. I'm sitting in my basement. Well, I'm, I'm, you're doing you're doing great stuff with the time. That's all I can say is I, I mean, this is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I know a lot of comedians. I've been reaching out to comedians and texting them and stuff and like, hey, what's going on? What have you been up to? Are you OK? You know, I like to check on people and stuff. Yeah. And some people are like, oh, I don't think I'm going to go back to comedy. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you're the funny one of the funniest people I know. Like, why would you not go back? You know, yeah. just stuff like that. Or I have some that are like, oh, you know, I've been kind of depressed lately or whatever. Thanks for reaching out. No one's reached out to me. And I'm like, what is going on? Like. Yeah. Joel, like Joel said, you know, having a community is important. And for me, that's what I'm about. Like, I love other comedians because I learned something from every single one of them. Obviously, you learned something. You had a comedian that you watched growing up. That was your that was your favorite. And I, I, I think I've heard of Tom before, but probably only in passing and probably only from like maybe watching old, you know, Tonight Show or something like that. Yeah. I don't think I've ever like seen him or whatever. But I was, you know, like a Rickles fan and mm. that kind of stuff. And or I'd go watch like Dean Martin Celebrity Rose. So I like yeah. those kind of things, too. So. I'm going to have to go check him out whenever I'm done with this. Cause that's, that's going to be cool. He's got um, some great stuff on YouTube where he's at the, uh, I think he's at the laugh factory uh, doing a lecture for comics. And I think it's like a five or six part series. And the, the stuff in there is so powerful because he really cares about first of all, his audience and mm-hmm. second off other comics, you know, he, he's the guy that uh, got Tiffany Haddish her break. Really? So, yeah. I mean, the, the, she's a Chicago yeah. Native, and he's a, he was originally from Chicago and he he really is everything that you see uh, as far as when you see him talk, because anytime I needed him for anything, he was my first guest. And wow. then I decided I wanted to, to do a special around his book. And he said, yep, I'll be there. And he's there and he does as long as I want him to to do. And just fantastic guy. He's 81 years old. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a, the comedy is like one of those things where you, you, it's unlike anything else. When you tell someone you're a comedian, I don't know if you get this. Do you get where they're like, oh, well, tell me a joke if they've never yeah. seen you, like, tell you a joke. And yeah. comedians, we know that's like the faux pas of like the same as like asking someone, like, how old are you? Like asking a woman how old you are yeah. or how much you weigh. It's like, you don't do that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. And so we're a different breed of, of humans. And, yeah. and, but, I, I guess the big thing that I always wonder is, uh, do you have a tight community where you're at? Because a lot of communities are not as tight as they could be. Yeah, it's very young, but it's very tight. Uh, they kind of think of me as the grandpa. So um, <laughs> super, super nice and super supportive. They are like in awe of the fact that I work clean after they do all their stuff. Because, yeah. I mean, they're not. I mean, not even close. So they 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 just like the fact. And some of them come to me and say, "Hey, how how can I make my stuff clean?" And some of it you can't. Yeah. Uh, but you know, some of it, some of it I help them with. And I, they're all very very dedicated to their craft. And it's funny. Any it, right now, if you go to any community, there is a comedy community. It doesn't matter if you've got. 5,000 residents or 500,000 residents in the city limits, somebody is working on comedy and these kids are really killing it. And I, I totally respect them. Yeah. And they, yeah. I mean, think about all the, all the things that they get now that we didn't have, you know, they have YouTube and they have Twitter and they have all these other ways of avenues of getting comedy where, you know, if I was, when I was a kid, I had to watch like HBO or go rent, rent something from like Blockbuster yeah. and watch it. Like yeah. that was, that was kind of the it. Or yeah. if I was lucky, my dad had an album of somebody and my, yeah. my the first album I ever heard was uh George Carlin's uh, AM PM. So, you know, it's like, or AM FM. And so it was one of those things where it was like, that's, that's rare. Like you're not, yeah. not going to get it anymore, but now I can, I have like a hundred comedy albums on my phone right now that I can listen yeah. to, you know? So yeah. it's like, it's crazy. And, and- and I think it's a good thing and a bad thing because right. I do think you get a little oversaturated with everything that's coming at you and it makes you so you don't pay attention to what's really good. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why there's a lot of people working clubs right now that are probably better than the people that have Netflix specials. Yep. And, yeah. and it's just because people aren't paying attention and, and you kind of get that when I, I don't know when the last time you're in a club performing is you kind of get that because people don't seem to, know how to act in a comedy club uh they they don't know who they're coming to see they don't know what they're supposed to do and it's it, it's it's different i think than what comedy clubs used to be they used there used to be a reverence for the comedian that came up and maybe not so much anymore yeah 
Yeah, I think it's like like how Vegas used to be because I, I lived in Vegas for a while. It used to be uh-huh. you had to dress nice to go into a, a, a casino. Yeah. And now it's flip flops and shorts and uh, you know, tearing up T-shirt or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, and, and that's what it is. We just kind of like lost that. This this is something that's not it, comedy. I always call comedy magic of the mouth. It's just like yeah. one of those things where like you see somebody doing, you go, I could do that. And then you try it and you go, wow, that's a thousand times harder than I thought it was going to be. Like, yeah. I don't understand how they're doing it. How do I figure it out? And it's like learning a magic trick. Like you have right. to learn all the pieces of it and the steps that you go through to make somebody go, Oh, that's awesome. You know, yeah. that's, that's one of those things. It's, it's crazy. And I think Robert G Lee, I think he might've told us that when we first interviewed him that, um, you know, um, you can always, uh, dirty up clean, but you can't clean up dirty. I think that yes. was the thing that he said. I think that's that's. I think yep. that's his line. I don't know if it's his line, but he. I attribute it to him quite often, actually. Yeah, so. I think I think he mentioned that in mine too, and he's right on with that. Yeah, yeah, and he's man, he's so good. What and so, have you got to? Is is anything open there? Like, are you able to perform at clubs where you're at and stuff, or are you <laughs> just doing Zoom or what? Yeah, it's 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 open somewhat open and i'm able but i'm not so i'm uh, as you can tell i'm an older gentleman and i've got a my second grandson on the way and uh i've had pneumonia a few times in the last couple years so i have to be careful i'm getting my first shot of the vaccine tomorrow so yes stoked for that but uh i actually i did get offered a headlining gig in uh, a town about an hour away and i had to turn it down just because Uh. i I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the guy that either is part of a, a community that starts a super spreader or <laughs> get it myself and bring it home. So it's hard. It's really it's hard. True. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, and that's the tough part is, and that's what I'm, that's what we're waiting for. Cause we're out in LA. That's the thing is there's no clubs open. And I mean, there's yeah. some backyard shows, but then comedians who weren't, this is, I heard this from a couple of comedian friends of mine, comedians who weren't getting booked on the backyard shows were calling uh, reporting these backyard shows to get shut down mm. i was like dude are you kidding me like what just just be polite like if you that's why yeah. they're not letting you on the show you're being a jerk you know oh uh, like, that's the other thing about com- <laughs> comedy you got to be careful <laughs> so i was like wow yeah so like the, the like and then like the cops would come and like when they try to do another show the cops would come like hey you can't do this you know what i was like dude come on man it's like we're not hurting anybody like yeah you know everyone yeah. has a mask on still everyone you right. know like I don't know what the problem is. Yeah, it's it's such a crazy. This whole thing's crazy. I can't wait for it to be over. I'm tired of Zoom shows. No offense to Zoom. Thank you so much for what you do because you yeah. always do stuff like this. But I, it's not the same as being in front of the people and and getting yeah, that love. You, it's funny. I I explained it like um, when you get done with a Zoom show, you feel like you got stood up for a date. <laughs> And that's a great joke. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's just that sinking feeling. And no matter how good you did, <laughs> I did one right before this, and I I killed. And I I was like, eh. you yeah. know, I I feel sad. I don't want to do this anymore. So I don't do very many very many. Yeah, shows. <laughs> yeah that's no, that's exactly right. It, it's or it's like I always think of it as like it's getting it's uh getting one of those burgers that you wanted but you're getting the uh, beyond burger instead of the real meat you know yeah. it's like it's kind of it's kind of filling but not really you know yeah, you're like man yeah. it's okay but yeah eh, i should have got the real burger you know like yeah. that's yeah. <laughs> no I offense really anybody like... who likes beyond burger though yeah by, by yeah okay. I, i'm i'm actually an impossible guy but are you really the, okay yeah i'm 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 a no meat guy but um the good thing about the whole virtual thing is you know you can pop into an open mic just about any time mm-hmm. and say the material because saying the stuff out loud is the important part it doesn't matter if you get a laugh or not but if you say it out loud a few times you get used to it and also there's like feedback mics there's mm-hmm. uh, i can probably get three people together at just about any time and run riff just riff by them and give them premises and work on stuff so that is a good thing and i think i hope that continues have you heard about uh, the a live show app? I have not. It's, so it's an app that you get on your phone. So I think it's like I, I think it's on Android and iOS. I know it for mm-hmm. sure it's on iOS. And every day they have mics, and what they do is you get on you put it on your phone, and then Pete, the the audience can also react to you and give you points and stuff. Oh, and at wow. the end of the show, 
it will give you all your points. And then you could also have keep the video because it stores a video and you could download it and upload it to wherever you want and stuff. So if you had a oh. good set, you had a good show, you can keep it. It's free to do. It's free to it's free to download and everything like that. Uh-huh. Um, but it's called a live show app. And it's just oh. it's amazing. So we we talked to the guys who created it. We're helping them try to uh, fund it and keep it going and do sponsorships, deals with them and stuff and try to get oh, them yeah. going. But it's really cool because they do it every day. And, you know, they're trying to expand more and more shows. But it gives comedians three minutes and it has a timer and it's just – I like it a lot. I like it a lot better than a Zoom show because you can set up your phone anywhere. You're not relied on where, yeah. your, where your thing is, mm-hmm. so yeah. where your computer is. So I like it a lot better. And it's uh, I bought actually got ner- got nerdy and bought like a little USB adapter because I have a real mic that has yeah. a USB end that I could put into my computer and stuff. That uh-huh. way I can use it and have a stand and do all the things because that's what I miss about comedy is getting on the stage, taking the mic out of that mic stand and moving that mic stand. Right? Yeah. Something about that process is like i don't know did you, were you a sports guy or you a sports guy do you play sports uh i i was terrible at sports and i don't watch <laughs> sports <laughs> what, what's what's your hobby what was your hobby for the long time uh r- reading a lot of books i i okay, I, okay. Honest, no no uh, that's good so yeah, you know when you when you crack open music. the book Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I can relate it to that, but you know, when you crack, <laughs> <laughs> when you crack open a book for the first time that like uh, the noise it makes when you yeah. crack that cover and then you can, and you, and it's hard to flip the pages the first time it's yeah. that that's that motion of moving yeah. the mic. It's that it's I'm into this now. I'm, I'm yeah. going to be part of this. I'm committing to this journey. And that's what I like about, that's why I had, that's why I had to get like a mic and, and yeah. stand and all this stuff. That's fine. I don't know how to relate that to heavy metal music. <laughs> it's, it's like when you go to Metallica and someone puts you in a mosh pit. I don't know. Like, how do you know? What's, the, what's the relation there? I just finished Rob Halford's book. He, he, he did an autobiography called Confessional, and it's actually excellent. He's a singer for Judas Priest and okay. one of my favorite bands. I, I saw him back in 82, and it's just, just one of my favorite concerts ever. But it's funny you talk about the mic because I had actually made a decision the last time I perform live inside a club. I did a couple outdoor shows over the summer, but inside a club, I had decided to keep the mic in the stand. And I have not been able to put that into play yet, (laughs) but I've got a mic and a stand right here. So when I do Zoom shows, a lot of times I stand up because I can elevate this desk. I can stand up and actually uh, do it standing with the mic in my hand. And I feel like I'm more comfortable and I do better. Mm -hmm. And that's those weird things about comedy. You, you gotta, you gotta experiment and find those things. Yeah. It's weird, right? It's, it's, it's a, it's a feeling. And do you play instrument too, or you just end up, uh, I, I tried guitar for a while and I'm totally tone deaf, so I can't do it. <laughs> Luke, My guitar Luke. teacher said, as a guitar player, you make a great drummer. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's me. Luke is a, Luke plays the guitar. He really does. And he's amazing uh-huh. at it. He actually is really good at playing the guitar. Uh-huh. I tried to get him to do more musical comedy, but he won't, he won't do it. He doesn't. Want yeah. To do it at all. <laughs> I wish he would. I wish he would listen to me, but he doesn't. Luke, do you, Luke, do you have a question? Yes. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Who who have been some of your uh, favorite guests that you've had on your um, on your podcast? Uh, one of one of my big guests was uh, Michael Palasak, and oh, Michael Palasak. Um, yeah, he yeah. was on the. It's funny. I had him and Ian Bag like back to back, and they were wow. both on the same uh, last comic standing season, and he is uh also squeaky clean he's he, he's as clean as nate bargetsy and mm-hmm. uh it, it, i i he used to date one of our friend's nieces when he went to ball state university in indiana wow. and she kept saying how funny he was how funny he was so i finally got to saw him on last see him on last comic standing and he was very funny and then he played the drop comedy club our local club and was very funny and i was bugging him really bad to get on the podcast and he was always like yeah i want to do it yeah i want to do it couldn't set a date so it took me like six months to get him on but his mind is so it's it's so contrarian to be a being a comedian it's it, it, he looks at things different and by his act you can see that mm-hmm. and he there is no way he could be anything but what he is on stage and i totally respect that that he was able to find that and i don't think he's ever been any different he's been 
better and worse at comedy. Obviously, he's gotten better as he's gotten older. But I, I totally respect that. And the funny thing is, is Ian Bag is another one that I had as a second as a second guest. Totally different guy, and he's more of a Don Rickles type of guy, where he just totally lays into the audience and does all the crowd work. But the fact that he can do that night in and night out i totally respect that so those those are two um two back to back of course tom was a big one uh cory ryan forrester is one that i had on uh he was two weeks ago i think and uh the fact that he's uh he, he's a southern guy with a uh pretty liberal outlook and he's able to work on just about any stage i respect the heck out of that because and, and he's definitely not a clean comic but um <laughs> the the fact that he can do things like that and uh get away with it and get his message across is fantastic and my second guest i keep talking here Stuart huff if you ever get a chance to see Stuart huff he's a very philosophical guy he's a he's from um i think he lives in louisville and very philosophical comic and the way that he comes on stage sometimes with a notebook because he's treating it like an open mic and works out new material that you were going to see on an album someday it's just totally golden for me wow. and he's i've seen him i think three times and every time it's just absolute gold that's so cool. cool. I love Michael Powell. Like he's actually mm -hmm. what he's one of my favorite people. And it's so funny because my kids the other day, uh, there's a like viral YouTube video that's going around with him in it. Um, that most people don't know. It's some kid zoom bombs a comedy show he's on. Uh huh. And Michael like talks to him or whatever. And but the way that they edited it, it makes it look like Michael is kind of as like a teacher and is like <laughs> kind of like weird or whatever. So my kids are like, my kids are like, you have to come see this teacher. You have to come see this teacher. I'm like, okay, I'll watch the video. Cause I, we watch those kind of stupid zoom bomb videos. Uh -huh. So it starts and I go, that's Michael Palasak. He's not a teacher. And they go, no, no, no. He's a college teacher. He's college. I'm like, he's not a college teacher. I know him. Like, so I, so I immediately text Michael. I'm like, Hey, I saw this video of you. <laughs> What's going on? Are you teaching college now? He's like, no, it was a comedy show that I did on Zoom. Yeah. Zoom bombed it or whatever. But just super funny that there's that, like, once you know somebody, and my kids were adamant, adamant that he's a teacher. I'm, oh, like, yeah. I'm telling you right now, he's, he's smart enough to be a teacher, but he's not a teacher. Yeah. I'm telling you that right now. But And there's he, absolutely nobody like him nothing. working. Yeah. And one of the most unique guys out there. He is so, he's like, he looks at things, you're right, in such a different way that I was like, like uh, his bit about the iPad with the yeah. kid, you know, the one thing. Yeah. And you're just like, that's it. That shouldn't be funny, but it's so funny. It's yeah. something that we quoted on our house for like a year. Like we yeah. would do, uh, you, you just did the one thing, just yeah. did the one thing, you know, it was like, it, that shouldn't be that. If you think, if you wrote that joke, you go, that ah, this isn't a joke. Yeah. But he may, I, he, I don't know. He's amazing. He just, yeah. You, you always wonder if he's ever been angry. You know, <laughs> sometimes he gets a little you can tell he's been a little bit d d disappointed or maybe just a little put off but has he ever actually been angry that's a good i don't question. think so yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should ask him that michael yeah. have you ever been angry <laughs> You're like, oh, no you know not at all no I've, someone has said mean things to me but that's about it i'm like okay all right buddy You're like whatever yeah i'm not aware of that emotion yeah yeah <laughs> And he's the, he's the nicest person too. That's the thing about him. He's yeah, so, yeah, he's very, a, very good guy. Wow. And who are your influence besides Tom? Who are your influences for you and your comedy? Like, who do you kind of look up to, or who do you kind of listen to or enjoy now? Besides, yeah, Tom? really the the one the one that really took me through after Dreesen was Letterman, and mm -hmm. I I would stay up every night and watch Letterman no matter what I had to watch it live even after I got a VCR that I could record and I a lot of people say I am most like him as a oh. comedian and then uh, after that Ray Romano I'm oh. super super stoked about his last special it's really it's great that, that special was fantastic but I've loved him for years and years and I when I look at new comics I, I have to honestly say, I don't have anybody, you know, Bill Burr is great. All these guys are great, but nobody really hits me like some of these guys that have been doing it for a while. And I, that maybe that's just me and maybe my particular style is a throwback to that. And if I can keep that style going, I feel good about it. 
I, I would love to see that style come back. I'm a big fan of that because yeah. I, you know, I watch a lot of st- Seinfeld stuff. I'll watch Steve Martin because I love Steve Martin. I'll yeah. watch, you know, um, Co- Old Cosby. I know you're not supposed to say that, but I love, I love Old Cosby. Yeah. You know, oh, I had all his albums. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah. do too. You know, and and I, you know, I love Rodney Dangerfield. Feel like these are guys that I've all Eddie Murphy. I have both of his specials. Like they're still two of my favorites to this day. Mm. Those styles are just so different it's not that's i mean chris rock is probably the new eddie murphy and then kevin hart's probably the new chris rock i guess if yeah. you want to do it that way but there's there's not another steve martin we'll never yeah. see that again we'll probably never see another rodney dangerfield yeah you know it's just you're it's one of those things where if you can keep something like that alive bravo thank you yeah. I, you know pa- paula poundstone have you ever yes. gotten to see paula poundstone live? i've never seen her live i want to though it's it's so much different than whatever you hear because she works the audience kind of like ian bag does really okay. and she she is so good I mean, it was, I, I don't know of anybody that's as quick on her feet as Paula Poundstone and Elaine Boozer. I mean, it's oh, just, I love Elaine Boozer. yeah, it's just, it, it, and the funny thing is, is everybody who is working today is using elements of what was before. However, it's so much more in your face and you have to get to the punch quicker. And I, I like a good story. I like uh, a lot of tags. I like a lot of, uh, exposition you know i i, I want to get drawn into their lives and that's what the old the old comics did yeah exactly well how, where can people find you scott where can they find the the podcast where can they watch your stand-up all that kind of stuff yeah so behind the bits is very easy to find just type <laughs> behind the bits in the, any podcast app and you'll see my rick and morty blue uh <laughs> tragedy comedy mass on there and uh so that's that's easy i do have a website called the btbpc.com because somebody got behind the bits and they won't sell it to me and uh wow. and yet it's still parked uh but yeah so i've got that um i'm on all the social media under behind the bits podcast except for twitter because somebody got that and i'm the btb pc on that <laughs> as well but uh instagram is kind of it's kind of my home that's where i where i do most of my stuff and facebook i also do a talk show called the btb internet talk show that is streamed on Twitch. Uh, it's the drinks, jokes, and storytelling channel on Twitch, and that's a lot of fun. So you know how serious my podcast is. I don't, I don't mess around. I just yeah, get right to so it. Good. There's so there's good. no small talk. The, the talk show is what I do to actually have fun. So it's very um, like old style talk show ish. It's very. Um, uh, non zoom comedy like because I bring people on, I make sure they get to promote stuff. I have Dean Martin show up because mm-hmm. guess what guys, he was cryogenically frozen. They <laughs> thought him out and he had no money. So he's living with me. So he comes out and people ask him questions. So that's a, that's kind of my pet project and I'm having a lot of fun at that. Do you have those videos posted anywhere? Or do you have to watch them live on? Yeah, Twitch if or? you go to my YouTube, there's okay. uh, I'm gonna most check of them. Out. That sounds awesome. Yeah, the and and it's funny the show when it's bad, it's almost <laughs> better than when it's good. Uh, so it's it, I don't really care how it turns out if it's if it's funny or if it's not funny. If there's if there's really awkward pauses, I love it. <laughs> so, um, but. I'm good with either way. So I get people on that I have never met before. I get people on who say they're a comic and they've only done one open mic. I, it, it, <laughs> I, anybody who wants to come on can come on. And uh, it's a lot of fun. That sounds so fun. That sounds yeah. like like the most fun ever. Pat I'm gonna... Palisac did it. Did you? Okay, I'm gonna go check it out. Ago. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. And you, how did he do it? Was was he live in the studio with you, or did they do it remote like this? Or what? yeah, we did we did it remote. Yeah, I the, the talk show is all remote. It's kind of like this. That's and cool. It, it's just a lot of fun. I'm gonna have to pick your brain about that because that sounds like a fun like a fun way to do things. And I miss old school talk shows. They don't do they don't do those kind of shows. Like even late night TV is not Carson. It's not the same anymore. No, it's not yeah. Letterman. It's not it's not any of that stuff anymore. It's not yeah. loud. It's kind yeah. of a whole, it's almost like it's a, uh, it's a meta version of itself where it's like yeah. almost pretending it's a talk show doing a talk show. Yeah, type it thing. is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, eh, I'm kind of burned out on that. But I miss yeah. like, I've been to get my nostalgia. I've been watching the Larry Sanders show. Cause that was like so 30 rock. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I love yeah. that show. Yeah. 
And and the funny thing about that is it's so real. Yeah. Um Even though it's fake, I love the Warren Zevon episode. It, it, the, the one where he said, "I don't want to do Werewolves of London," and then <laughs> yeah. he comes out, "Hey, will you do Werewolves of London?" <laughs> but I and, and Janine Garofalo was just the absolute a, absolute standout in yeah. that. And uh, yeah, I love that show, and I am such a Shandling fan. I, I always forget to mention him, but he had a show before that called the Gary Shandling. It, it's, Show. it's the Gary it's the Gary Shandling show yeah that was hilarious yes. yeah yeah I just played that's funny because I just played the theme song for that for my wife and kids the other day because I watched I have the pilot and I downloaded a bunch on Amazon because you can get them on it you can stream it on Amazon but you have to buy them so, uh-huh. uh, but they only have I think the first season they don't have all four I think it's four seasons so you can't watch all of them you can only watch like the first season but just the theme song that's hilarious you know oh yeah and and he did a joke on there that I will never forget he, he he did that monologue and he said uh he said yeah i um had to trade in my uh porsche uh because i can't afford it anymore and i got myself a toyota <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome well yeah i'm excited i'm gonna have to go check that out luke where can people find you at uh you can find me at luke lacoy on netscape on what Excellent. netscape bring it back <laughs> Bring him back the hits. <laughs> Netscape. Do they even make Netscape anymore? Does it even exist? I have no idea. I'll, I'll ask Jeeves. <laughs> I still use Alta Vista for all my searches. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's that is that's nerdy comedy, guys. If you guys don't know any of that, that's hundred percent nerdy comedy yeah, right there. Yeah. It's that's the best, you know. All right, awesome. Well, please, guys, please check out behind the bits. Please go check out Luke, check out Scott. Please like and subscribe. Please leave us a review and go check it out on YouTube so you can see our beautiful faces. Luke is very handsome. Scott's very handsome. Me, not so much, and that's okay. You don't have to look at me that much. <laughs> we can just you can just put that blur filter on and watch away. <laughs> But thank you guys I'll so ta- much. I'll take Luke's face. How about there, that? Yeah, yeah, me too. I feel a little bit better. And his hair. Yeah, yeah he's got great hair. Actually, when he has like really bushy hair, it's really cool. He hasn't done it in a while. And yeah, I'm surprised because I don't think we can get haircuts. Can we get haircuts right now, Luke, in California? I I don't know. My 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 <laughs> wife is my barber, so oh, I you guess know. you can get haircuts. I can't get haircuts. I got to go to somebody that's better than my wife. She won't. She Ooh. won't do a good job. Well, is, she, she'll tell you that she'll tell you she's not a she's not a hair person not for guys for my daughters but not for me all right well thank you guys so much for checking us out thanks for listening like subscribe and have a great week bye mm-hmm.